Good day. Welcome to this lecture video. We will be discussing nature uses, advantages, and limitations of non-parametric tests. By the way, I am Dr. Melanie Chikurat, your professor in this subject. For the nature uses, advantages, and limitations, we are, of course, very familiar that unlike parametric tests that needs to check for some assumptions, non-parametric statistics make no assumptions about the properties of distribution from which the data are drawn, except that the distribution is continuous. So we are familiar that when we are using parametric tests, we have some assumptions like our data must be at least interval, that the data must be normally distributed, that we must satisfy other um assumptions like test for homogeneity and the like. So let's have a discussion here of a comparison of non-parametric and parametric statistics. So for non-parametric tests, so as long as of course that the data is continuous distribution. While for parametric statistics, we need to consider assumptions of normality and equal variances. Next, if we are going to present parametric statistics, it also means that we will be using mean, variance, and standard deviations at location parameters. While if we're going to use non-parametric statistics, then what we need is the median. So the reason behind this is if, of course, you know what is the appropriate measures of central tendency for our data, if our data is normal, uh, Let's say if our data is nominal, the most appropriate is the mode. If our data is ordinal, the most appropriate is the median. While if our data now is at least interval or ratio, the most appropriate is, of course, the mean. But we have to consider that we can use mean if we have a normally distributed data. While if the data is not normally distributed, Hence, we're going to use the median. Now, for non-parametric statistics and parametric statistics, we are, of course, also familiar that in terms of uh, um, conducting it, we have to consider random sample. This is, of course, to avoid bias. And then next, independence of responses for both. While for um, non-parametric statistics, again, we use this test even if we have a nominal data, ordinal data, interval data, and even sometimes ratio data as emphasized whenever the data is not normally distributed. While for parametric statistics, the requirement is that it is, or rather, it must be at least interval. So it uses interval and ratio data. And then, uh, again, for non-parametric, so we have large and small data sets. We can use non-parametric, but for parametric, it requires large data sets as much as possible, minimum of 30 or more cases. It has also been considered that parametric test is more powerful than non-parametric test for rejecting null hypothesis. And of course, if it's more powerful than the non-para now is weaker is statistical power than a parametric is statistics. So just of course to have um to go back rather to our main concern, what is now then the nature of non-parametric tests? So for non-parametric tests, we do not require the underlying population for assumption. It does not rely on any data referring to any particular parametric group of probability distribution. It is also called distribution-free test since they do not have any underlying population. In terms of the use of non-parametric tests, it is used to analyze data when the distribution assumptions of more common procedures are not satisfied. So we need, meaning to say, if we fail to satisfy the condition, for instance, of normality, then even if we want to use parametric test, since it's more powerful, then we tend to use a non-parametric test. 
And of course, it's also been presented in our table that we use non-parametric tests in all types of data. So it can be nominal, ordinal, or interval, or ratio. But of course, emphasizing that it is not normally distributed. Now, how about for the advantages of non-parametric tests? So since, of course, we also highlighted in our table that for parametric, it requires a large sample as much possible. So for non-parametric, it's an advantage because there are some researches that as much as we want to add more respondents, even if we already capture the whole population, still the sample is small. So for that cases, we can, of course, use non-parametric. So it's an advantage for non-parametric that we can apply even if we have a smaller sample sizes. And it is also advantage that it is used for more types of data, including nominal and ordinal, which cannot be used in non-para, uh, I mean, in parametric tests. And the scenes we also highlighted in the, the nature that we do not have to check for the assumptions or there are no assumptions required. So we have here fewer or less stringent assumptions about the nature of the population distribution. So it's more robust and it's not often it's seriously affected by extreme values in data such as outliers. And like, of course, for parametric, in case that we have um, encountered all of this, we tend again to use non-parametric tests. So a higher level of asymptomatic relative efficiency compared to classical parametric tests. And it provides alternative tests and techniques to currently existing parametric tests. So we need to say whenever we are, of course, dealing with um, our data, and we, of course, did not satisfy the assumptions, we have to think that we can still answer the problem because we have alternative tests in case that we are not, of course, uh, the data did not satisfy the conditions of a parametric test. So we have alternative tests, which is the non-parametric test. Well, for the limitations of using non-parametric tests, it's neither as, of course, powerful nor as efficient as parametric tests. So this is, again, being emphasized in the comparison table that we presented. It is not as precise or as accurate as parametric tests in many cases, like ranking tests with a larger number of ties. It might lead to erroneous decisions about rejecting or not rejecting the null hypothesis because again of lack of precision in the test. So it is it utilized the utilized data inadequately in the analysis because they transform observed values into ranks and groups. And lastly, the sampling distribution and distribution tables for non-parametrics are too numerous and are often cumbersome and are limited to small sample. Sizes. As you can see here, as much as some of the um, nature of using parametric tests seems to be advantageous, it also, of course, have its limitations. And, of course, that is now the disadvantage also of using the test. Okay, so these are the reference materials that we used in the, this discussion. Thank you for watching.